Please join us in saying the words to the unison affirmation written on the inside of your order of service. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another, to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. Please be seated. I invite you now to take a breath and settle into some time for prayer and meditation and silence. The first reading today is the prayer by Teilhard de Chardon, a French Jesuit priest, paleontologist, theologian, and philosopher in the first half of the 20th century. <clears throat> Above all, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take a very long time. The second reading is this improvisation on Psalm 123 by the UU minister, Reverend Christine Robinson. I gaze at the starry skies, drawn to every tiny light, drawn to what I know of each one's unfathomable distance, astounding size, profound age. I look to this big picture to help me imagine you. The intricate patterns bind us. Have mercy on your tiny servants who watches for you in the watches of the night. Please rise as you are able and sing with us hymn 94. What is this like? I just broke one of my own rules <laughs> and committed one of the things that is one of my pet peeves about preachers, which is picking a hymn because it kind of helps set up the sermon, even though people don't know it, and they're probably not going to say it. <laughs> I have so many times I've been in church, and I've seen like, oh, why did the preacher pick that? And it's obvious because of the words, not because people thought it was a good one to sing. So I will mark and remember that. I thought we might have known that one, but... We yeah. won't know unless we try. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Weeks, we'll learn it. This is yeah, true. it's okay. <laughs> Appreciate your spirit of willingness. What is this life is full of care. We have no time to stand and stare. Those lines were written about a hundred years ago by the Welsh poet William Henry Davies. And they still are appropriate, applicable for us today, aren't they? About 50 years after he wrote those lines, my mother tells me that my kindergarten teacher one day said something quite similar. One day she told my mom, I think it's sad that children these days don't have much time to lie in the grass and look at the clouds. That was a pretty long time ago now, and life hasn't gotten slower or simpler since then, has it? But I'm not trying to romanticize those days before cable TV or the internet or 
these little computers we carry around with us. I'm not saying that back then our culture was a contemplative paradise or a more just one. Even with the bad news these days, we have made progress. We are a somewhat kinder, more just society than we were when we were children. And in other ways, too, we've changed and evolved some. These days, you know more and more people who have some kind of mindfulness practice from yoga to meditation to prayer or something that I don't even know about. More people have done therapy and other kinds of inner work. I do believe we are getting more in touch with the wonder and the mystery of life, and that is a good thing. I wonder if, when you were young, anybody ever said to you, Make yourself useful. <laughs> or, did you ever hear, don't just sit there, do something. <laughs> okay, you did. Not too long ago, a meditation teacher named Sylvia Borstein, she turned that phrase around, and she wrote a book with this title. It's about mindfulness, and it's called, Don't Just Do Something, Sit There. Our November worship theme is the way of imagination. But I have to confess that several weeks ago, starting to think about this month, my heart sank. And I had this thought, I don't have much heart or energy for imagining right now. I wrote that in my journal. I wrote, I'm tired. I need to rest and go slow and be fed. I'm talking about soul food. And I wonder, anybody else feeling that way? I'm not surprised. But writing that down kind of surprised me and it got my attention. And so this is a sermon I myself need to hear. And maybe some of you need to hear it too. But even that awareness was helpful, and since then I have been trying to slow down and making some progress in that. And I love this week of Thanksgiving, this late fall time when we celebrate the harvest, from gathering with loved ones to eating pie to raking leaves. I like all of that, this lovely national celebration of hearth, and home and the gifts of our good earth. It's meant to be a simple and spacious celebration, isn't it? And however you observe Thanksgiving, even with its challenges this year, I hope it will be good for you this year. And at the same time, it's complicated, right? We need to acknowledge that it's such a privilege to have a home and to have enough to eat that there is so much we can take for granted. We whose ancestors came to this country from somewhere else, we should take seriously the fact that on Thursday, indigenous people and their allies will be gathering down in Plymouth for a national day of mourning. And this is something that has been happening there for over 50 years now. And it's important for us to acknowledge that truth that when white people came to this land, our arrival came at a great cost to Native people. And I hope we can just hold that reality and let it inspire us to work for more justice. There is a human cost to our capitalist system, which celebrates striving and toiling and values the individual over the common good. 
And many of us have benefited from this system and the wealth and the goods that it produces. But it's complicated, isn't it? And we know it comes with a cost to exploited workers, to our environment, to future generations who will be left with cleaning up some of the messes that we have created. It makes me sad that the day after Thanksgiving, retail employees have to get up and leave their homes and families early because it's such a huge shopping day. No wonder so many are longing for a simpler life. And that, at least to some degree, I think is what we are inviting you to this month. To open your heart and your mind a bit wider. To explore what may seem to be right now off limits or off the map. But yearning in you or calling to you to let the dislocation of this time we're living in right now fuel for you some new wonderings and new wanderings. Who knows where your imagination could take you? Who knows? But you know, it's hard to be entering into the way of imagination if you're like a little hamster. No. If you're like a little hamster on one of those wheels, you know, running, 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 but going nowhere fast. It takes some time and some intention to enter that open and spacious place where the imagination will come out and play. It's sad if we don't have much time to lie in the grass and look at the stars or the clouds, isn't it? But what's keeping us from that? From taking time to care for our own souls? What's keeping us from taking time to do what we long for? Or to care for others and to care for our home, this good earth? Maybe I'm preaching to the choir this morning. You're here. You seem to know that coming to church as unproductive as it may seem is somehow good for you. And many of you have practices, you've told me about them, that keep you grounded in touch with your inner life and with the spirit. But maybe you could still use a reminder and a little encouragement in these days to make space for quiet and contemplation, for reflection, for imagining. I certainly need to be reminded. Because we live in this culture and we're entering into this season that will push us to speed up, right? But there is this companion invitation hiding just underneath in the shadows, and that's the invitation to slow down. That prayer by Te Tehar de Chardin has been showing up unexpectedly in my mind lately, especially its first line. It's like somebody is trying to send me a message. Above all, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet, it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take a very long time. The invitation is to be here, where you are, to be present to what is going on right here, right now, which is how we invite deeper thoughts 
and deeper imaginings into our awareness. Those of you who meditate, you know this, don't you? Teaching the mind to quiet down takes both practice and also a letting go. And it certainly takes time. But every now and then, something shifts. A new life-giving awareness comes. It's like a layer of insulation gets peeled away from your heart and you feel a deeper connection to all things. And this can make you feel both more vulnerable and at the same time more at home in the world. There have always been mystics and contemplatives with their countercultural practices, showing us that there is another way to live. A deeper life, a more meaningful life is possible. Reminding us, as Rumi wrote, there are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. Last Sunday, I said that I want and need to bring more of a spirit of imagination and adventure to my days, to have more wonder and less dread. And the best way I know how to do this is to carve out a more spacious life, to get off the hamster wheel and out under the sky, where your perspective can't help but be changed, like we heard in Christine Robinson's version of Psalm 123. I gaze at the starry skies drawn to every tiny light, drawn to what I know of each one's unfathomable distance, astounding size, profound age. I look to this big picture to help me imagine you. The intricate patterns bind us. Have mercy on your tiny servant who watches for you in the watches of the night. Your tiny servant who watches for you in the watches of the night. On the four Wednesdays in December, We'll be again offering Vespers here in our sanctuary. This simple half an hour service for evening at 6 p.m. It's a good way to watch in the night here in our dark and candlelit sanctuary with some words and music, very few words and a lot of silence. The other day, one of you was telling me about a meditation retreat that you did from home with a little, with a bit of online support. And lately, I've been finding myself imagining doing that myself. A silent retreat day, a day with no talking and no electronics, just being open to the silence that is so near to us, if we will slow down and quiet down enough to hear it. But I have to imagine for some of you, this may sound impossible right now. And for some of you, it's not gonna be something that is attractive to you at all, and that is fine and good. But if the idea of some more silence and some more spaciousness moves you, I hope you won't hesitate to ask for help. There are plenty of folks in this congregation who know how to walk this way, how to practice this. And you can let me know if you want help in making connections or if you'd like to explore these things. Back when I was feeling restless in my previous vocation, before I had any idea that I was going to be heading off to seminary, I started a daily writing practice. And that turned out to be a big help. 
First thing in the morning, I would sit down with my journal and write whatever came to mind. And to my surprise, this often brought me into a better place. Eventually, I came to imagine a way forward that was completely or mostly unexpected. And in those morning pages, I often wrote myself from a place of malaise and feeling lost toward a place of gratitude. Most days, I ended my writing by writing a short prayer of thanks. That's the thing about following the leadings of your heart and soul. They point you toward where you need to go, where in your deepest self, where you long to go, where you can imagine a more expansive life, where you are at home with yourself and in the world, grateful for what is and for what is yet to be. If you are longing for a deeper, more meaningful life, take heart. You don't have to go anywhere. It's very near you. And it's not that hard to find. Not really. You just have to slow down and wait. It will come. You just need to practice that radical and life-changing art of listening for the voice within. Being present, being awake, being open to this moment, to this life. Amen. Let's now sing a lovely hymn of thanks. It's number 322. Thanks be for these. Please join me in saying the words for extinguishing the chalice, also written on the inside of your order of service. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And may there be a fire that burns so brightly in our hearts that not only does it keep us warm, but it sends us out to do the work we've been given to do, to love one another, to serve those in need, to help build the common good, so we do our part to help renew the face of this good earth. Amen.